preceding conversation, never ceased to surprise the Colonel, who considered such behavior singular well past the point of incivility. More than once did Colonel Fitzwilliam compare his two cousins, concluding that the one lady was silent from her great desire to please, whilst the other from her equally strong desire not to please. <laughs> one evening soon after his arrival, upon finding themselves sitting alone after supper, Lady Catherine addressed him thus. Well, George, tis a dreadful dip business about Darcy, but as they are married, I suppose there's nothing to be done about it now. I have long been resigned to the disgrace of attending this deplorable alliance, but as you know, my sympathy is never directed toward my own complaints. However, Anne yet suffers this disappointment attending Dar Darcy's selfish violation of all claims of honor and duty due to his family, an affliction I do not intend to brook any longer. As my first duty is to my daughter, I must no longer to spend, suspend decisions to the best alternate course for her happiness. These five years have now passed without any change in Anne's inclination to marriage, and it occurs to me as the most sensible, indeed as the only acceptable alternative, that I should give my consent to your marriage with my daughter. <laughs> to be sure, you have no fortune, and therefore no prospect of marriage with anyone of her rank and situation in life. Her burning, bur her beauty and person are superior, her accomplishments unsurpassed, and as my daughter, she would be a match far above any you could hope to make without the benefit of the interest which, as a younger son, you are unlikely to receive. 